Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel. So one of the things that's seemingly getting harder these days is to find your very first internship or a job as a software engineer. It's even more competitive than ever before to get into a computer science or software engineering program to begin with, and securing that first job feels like you have to like jump across this 3,000 foot cliff to get to the other side, which is employment. So when it comes to actually finding a job, it's a big feat and a pretty big deal. But it's hard to know what to do or even where to start in the first place. Where are you supposed to look even to find jobs? Do you look on LinkedIn or other job boards? Are you supposed to directly apply to jobs on their careers page? And while we're at it, what's your resume even supposed to look like? I actually made a video about this. You can check it out right there. Does writing a cover letter help? I also made a video about that one. There are a lot of things to consider. So I recently spoke to my friend Sarah at levels.fyi and asked her questions like this. She's been a recruiter at multiple fan companies, including Amazon, Facebook, and Google, and has helped people find jobs all over the tech industry. The real truth is that while the job search experience varies from person to person, in the tech industry, there is at least some sort of process that everyone seems to follow. And so there's at least a few things that you can do to make your life easier and set yourself up for success. And I think one thing to remember is that recruiters are really trying to find someone and find the right person for the job. That's probably easy to forget after you apply to your 200th job. They want to do as good of a job as they can. And they might also be needing to negotiate with a hiring manager who has their own priorities and goals. So all those factors, time, budgets, who else is involved in the process, influences where recruiters look for candidates. So knowing all this, where is the best place to put yourself as a candidate? Sarah breaks it down into three big chunks, job sites, referrals, and events. And before we continue, I wanted to say a quick thank you to Felix Gray for sponsoring today's video. Yes, a lot of y'all ask about what glasses I wear and these are Felix Grays and I love them. So five years ago, Felix Gray realized that we're not meant to be looking at computer screens all day. And so they designed glasses to make daily screen time more comfortable. So the lenses in these glasses actually filter 15 times more blue light, which is a thing that makes screen time really like tough on the eyes and makes sleep very disruptive. So the ones that I'm wearing are the Roebling in Amber Toffee and the Low Nose Bridge Fit Style because your girl's Asian and she has a flat face. They offer classic styles that are made from acetate and are hand finished for a durable, lightweight, and very comfortable pair of glasses. Oh, and these blue light lenses are also available in non-prescription or prescription as well. These have prescription in them because my optometrist was like, if you don't wear these, your eyes are just gonna get worse. Which actually though, ever since I started wearing these, my eyes have not gotten worse, which is great. So if you can feel the screen time in your eyeballs, or you just really wanna try blue light glasses, then try Felix Grey. With their 30 day money back guarantee, there's literally nothing to lose but eye strain. Thank you again to Felix Grey for sponsoring. Make sure to check them out in the description box down below and let's get back to the video. So every company has like a jobs page where they post new listings for openings at their company, but it can be impossible to keep up with like all those individual companies and refreshing pages like facebook.com slash careers like 20 times a day. So there's an entire ecosystem of job sites that place all these job listings in one place, like LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, and AngelList. So when you think of job sites, of course, LinkedIn is probably the first to come to mind. But one thing that I learned is that LinkedIn LinkedIn is actually really saturated with candidates. The, I, be, I feel like everyone will say like LinkedIn would be like the first place that they go to, but LinkedIn is really saturated and it's expensive for a company to post jobs on there. So usually when they post a job on LinkedIn, it's because these are typically harder to fill roles. So companies are looking for something very specific with anything that they have on LinkedIn. So the best place to look actually frankly, is where others aren't. So she says to kind of branch out and try all the different job sites that you can. I think Indeed is really underrated. She also recommends AngelList, which fun fact is where I found my job at Patreon. 
In general, job sites like LinkedIn and Indeed are totally fine to apply to, but it's actually recommended to find what's called a job ID on the listing. You can use that ID to find the job on the actual careers page of that company and apply to that directly. Most likely I'll ask the candidate again, can you fill out your application using this link? So um, just to make things a little bit easier on the company and the recruiter, if you see it on LinkedIn, apply there, but go to the career site and then just do like the actual job application anyways. This is mostly because the actual job listing on the company website will have the required questions that you need to fill out to apply to the company versus aggregator sites and job sites won't have stuff like that. It just makes the recruiters lives easier if you give them all the information they need on the first try. Sarah also says that because there's so many steps to the recruitment process, if like a recruiter quits or like they get reassigned to a different team or role or something, then your application can definitely fall through the cracks. And that does actually happen more than you think. So if you find a role that like really resonates with you, then go out and find the actual hiring manager for that job and reach out personally. That way, even if the recruiter gets reassigned, you've contacted the main person responsible for hiring for this role. What I like to do is I just go on LinkedIn, let's say if my dream company to work for is Figma. So I'll go on LinkedIn and then I'll go through Figma. So I would go into like the people tab and then in like the box where it says like search employees by title, keyword or school, I usually just put down manager and then it pull up like the right manager for you to look through. Oh, and pro tip from Sarah, you can go on LinkedIn and look up keywords like we're hiring or join our team. That way you can find people who are looking for candidates in a slightly creative way. All right, so first up, what's a referral? It's when a friend, colleague, or acquaintance of some sort refers or recommends you to a job at their company. And usually when they refer you, they have to fill out a form. That form basically contains their connection to you and their endorsement of you. They'll talk about how they know you and explain why they think you're good at what you do and also tell the company why you're right for the role. Most of the time, all these referrals get to kind of like skip the line as far as applications go, because a lot of them have a goal to respond to these referrals in a timely manner. This doesn't mean that you'll automatically get an interview or whatever, because it still has to get reviewed by the hiring manager. So yeah, referrals are just like more legitimate connections. And because of the process they go through, it's not even really like nepotism that fuels it. This is just another way for recruiters to find someone who might be right for the job by any means at their disposal. Uh, referral carry a lot of weight. So if you have someone who maybe work at Google and that's where you want to be, ask for a referral, but also make sure that you ask the right person too. Like if you've worked with that person in the past or like know that person really well, there were a handful of times where people got in trouble for referral fraud because they just submit someone because they want that like payout. So a lot of employees like became more aware of that. So they tend to be a little bit more careful in terms of like who they refer. So yeah, referrals are basically like asking someone to stick out their neck for you. So I wouldn't recommend going to like random people or people you only kind of know for a referral, especially if they just like don't know you and they've never seen your work. So this is just another plus one to the advice that I always say of building strong and real connections with people instead of just like adding 500 connections on LinkedIn. So events might actually sound kind of weird on paper, like they might be really networking heavy or they're not actually productive, but they're really worth the time. And that's because recruiters and hiring managers put a lot of effort into putting on these events. Remember again, like they want to hire people, like that's their goal. So they create these events for people to go to. It's like a legitimate gathering. So if you're invited to one or you hear about one, then definitely go to them takes a lot of work to put an event together and from a recruiter perspective like I know that my upper management will ask me in terms of like ROI and metrics I can't just put together an event and there isn't a way for me to measure my ROI unless if I send candidates that take home assignment and then from there present you know like oh we put out this event and it costs us this much and on top of that we ended up getting X amount of candidates, and then here's our conversion rate. So that would be like the best way for you to get noticed. So really, it all boils down to being ready to present yourself, trying your best in whatever creative way possible to put yourself in front of the people who are hiring. 
Oh, and if I might add like one more piece of advice for this journey, don't be too concerned if like things don't take off immediately. A lot of this stuff, like applying to jobs, interviewing, finding the right role for you, takes time. Anyone will tell you that like good talent gets found one way or another. So if you're in the thick of it right now, applying for jobs, trust me, it will work out. P.S. What about those like recruiting agencies that people talk about? Are they useful? Should I talk to them? Are they good at getting jobs? If you're interested in finding out the answer to that question, then I've created it as bonus content for my members on YouTube. You can get access by becoming a member for as low as 99 cents a month by clicking the join button down below. Thank you again, Sarah from Levels.FYI for answering all of my questions about the recruiting process. I'll leave her link and any other things that I mentioned in the video today in the description box down below. Thank you so much to my YouTube members for supporting me and my work and these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye.